evening to all of you this is preeta balakrishnan again and uh, continuing with my series of interviews with people from various walks of life i have a surprise for you today let me quickly uh, i mean it's no surprise but uh, you know in a way a surprise right so let me quickly introduce myself i'm preeta balakrishnan a women's independence coach uh, and my vision is to help 100000 women become self reliant and one of the reasons why i'm doing these interviews is that it becomes a ready reckoner for women you know to have a look at it in terms of suggestions ideas and actions that they, that they can take to implement on it on uh, you know in their day to day life so these are people uh, whom we are t- uh, talking to are people from the industry from various walks of life and uh, they come with their own experience and when they give so su- sort of valuable suggestions and actions and ideas uh you know we can just uh, uh you know just take that and implement it without any uh, questioning and that the, you know this idea actually came to me one fine morning when i got up saying why not i do these interviews with uh, leaders you know uh, whether they are managing their own businesses whether they are digital experts whether they are a doctor or whether whatever that they are whether they are an artist whatever it is if we are able to take suggestions actions and ideas from these people and just implement one action suggestion or idea for us probably uh, the challenges that we face as entrepreneurs as women entrepreneurs whatever it may be it'll really help you uh, scale up in the journey of entrepreneurship so i'm actually uh, today's uh, uh, you know interviewer is again um, uh a very very special uh, uh interviewer and all of you know that i have actually uh, uh invited uh, yes uh, uh, from na- the, one of the nine digital masters uh, and as i've said in the poster it is uh, him ahmed and i'm so honored that he's accepted this invitation and i'm waiting for him to join and as he joins i'll uh, then also uh, you know introduce him to you uh so i've sent the uh, request to him and i uh, thank you uh, pritika thank you amit thank you for joining and uh, you are more than welcome to ask questions when the interview is going on uh, while i'm uh, creating this platform to have the interview done if you feel that you need to ask uh, some relevant questions to uh, you know fahim uh, you are more than welcome to do that uh, and uh, in fact it was uh, Uh, Fahim, who had uh, given me uh, this um, suggestion uh, to ask uh, people who are viewing this interview, and you know, I'm also getting used to the digital platform and doing these live interviews. You know, scaling up in my own technology journey, and uh, I, I would love all of you to ask questions when the interview process is going on. Please feel free to do that. Uh, so, as I'm waiting for uh, Fahim to join, um, let me see if he's there. Uh, I've sent him a request. um just a second wait a second yeah he should uh yeah so it's it's just taking a little bit of time uh for him to uh, join in yeah there he is yeah there he is and i'm so glad uh, that uh fahim has accepted uh this particular uh, invite and i hope uh, how excited i am to do this interview and as uh, Uh, Fahim in, uh, comes into uh, you know the panel uh, discussion. That uh, good evening, Fahim. How are you doing? Fantastic, Rita. How are you? Good, good. So great to see you. And I was just you know explaining to the viewers as to why I was doing this, what is my objective, and also really uh, honored that you've accepted uh, this particular in discussion. Uh, you know, I was very hesitant, uh, Fahim, to actually ask. uh you uh, whether uh, you know it's a right thing to do whether we can i can do this interview i've uh, you know kept my hesitation aside and did that so i guess that's one of the suggestions i would give to people when they want to do something go and you know keep the hesitation aside <laughs> what do you say for him for that you only get when you ask right yeah so sure so i think one common thread that i see in all the nine digital masters you know is that if you ask them for help uh, they don't hesitate to say no uh, they may take time just, you know because of what, just, sorry sorry i just want to say hello to a bunch of people hi supriya how are you yes. geetarsh kaur thank you for joining stick around yes. please feel free to ask me any questions if you have uh, sure. i see a lot of uh, 
uh, men uh, definitely I, I hope the men also have questions so why don't you shout out uh, Preeta what is the topic going to be about hi happy yeah, Rana yeah. how are you Sure, Fahim. So, as I've uh, actually uh, put it up in the post, and I've been doing these interviews, the topic is about women power in uh, digital entrepreneurship. And I've been interviewing people from all walks of life. And whether it's a digital expert like you, or it's a doctor, or it's a business entrepreneur, or it's, uh, you know, the head of a company, the kind of views that you get being in that leadership level and the experiences that you have in this particular topic is what I'm looking at. Because as a women's independence coach, you know, one of the things all of us battle, whether it is woman or man, is like, you know, the various challenges that we face as an entrepreneur and more so as a woman entrepreneur. So I want to bring that angle here because I help women create goals and help them achieve it. So I, I think I've spoken a lot, but just to clarify that I've been also, uh, thanks Priya, uh, Supriya, right? Thanks, happy runner coach. So great. There are some people I've seen who constantly attend these interviews. And I hope, th so the idea of Fahim is basically that, you know, when they see these videos, they, they take away one action, suggestion, or, um, you know, ideas that Doctor, people can Dr. Chari, nice to see you, Dr. Chari. Sorry, sorry, I'm, Dr. Chari no, is no, no. Uh, Dr. Chari is a very renowned, uh, you know, a surgeon, and uh, yeah, she she is also part of the DMA, and we try to help her with uh, digital marketing. Hi, Ramya. That, that's getting on nerves. Is uh, she doesn't get on anybody's nerves, but uh, Ramya <laughs> is uh, my colleague. Hey, Ramya, you should stick okay. around. This is about women entrepreneurs. And uh, sorry, Preeta, I'm going to keep doing this, so, but so we'll keep it uh, light and fun. Let's keep engaging people too. Good. Sure, Fahim. Yeah. So that was the idea that you had given. So, and I remember this, uh, uh, you know, uh, DMA that we had. And what it says here about Fahim is actually, uh, you know, test, sell, and scale profitability through paid media. And uh, so with that, and this is the inspiration for me to also engage with all the nine digital masters. I've so far interviewed Avi Arya and uh, Sanjay Shanoi, and I hope to interview the rest. So let's see how it goes. Uh, so I want to quickly sure. introduce you. I'm sure all of them know you, but for the benefit of people who don't know you, can I take a minute introducing you, Fahim? Is that okay? Yeah, 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 please go ahead. Yeah, so uh, Fahim is the CEO of uh, Fahim Ahmed. Uh, Mr. Fahim Ahmed is the CEO of BYT Digital, digital agency owner, and with greater than 20 years of experience. He, uh, he's a person behind the strategy and execution of brands like Hamley's Toy Store, Harman Kardon, the, uh, the Fortune 500 brand, Apparel Brand Basics. He's also ran, uh, you know, worked for Reliance Brands and multiple brands of Times Internet uh, like Zigwheels and Ghana. I hope I've told everything right for you. Who's clues? What is that? <laughs> okay. And uh, apart from... Sorry? Sorry, so, uh, I didn't uh, get what you said. Okay, so no, no, I think someone uh, put up something there. So I was just wondering if you did that or it is uh, someone. I, I, I was just, uh, I was just goofing around. <laughs> Don't worry about okay, that. So, <laughs> so great. So apart from many startups and local businesses, Fahim is actually passionate about playing golf, uh, although he doesn't get uh, enough time for that, and he's a big advocate of low carb lifestyle living. So great, Fahim. Thank you again for accepting uh, this particular interview. And if you're comfortable, uh, can I start off with the first uh, question, Fahim? Yeah, yeah, please. Go ahead. I hope you're here and you're not elsewhere. Uh, so time for the first Talk question. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sure, sure. So, uh, uh, Fahim, so apart from me actually, you know, getting in touch with you and getting to telling you that this is the topic, why do you think the topic is really important for you? The topic being women power in digital entrepreneurship. Uh, how, how do you think, where does it, uh, uh, you know, f fall in your uh, space of life or why do you think it's so important? Yeah, um, so, I mean, the long answer is that, um, uh, not just in digital entrepreneurship, I think across uh, the cross section of uh, various businesses, I think women are already playing a very important role. And I think it's uh, even more so uh, going forward, uh, especially in digital entrepreneurship. I think uh, the kind of flexibility that people 
uh, women can have in uh, digital entrepreneurship, I think uh, for a lot of people, this can be a nat natural choice, right? Uh, why it is important for me is, I mean, I, as soon as you said we should do it, I, I right away said, yeah, sure, let's, let's do that. Uh, simply because I don't think I can uh, do without women uh, colleagues in my workplace, right? I can absolutely say that. And I have a very good uh, CXO friend of mine, and I've always uh, said this, I hope no, none of my male colleagues are here. I've told her quite a few times, if I could, I would just have an all-female team at uh, BYD itself, like a reverse discrimination, if you want to call it. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm absolutely all for it. Mm. So is there a particular reason why, uh, Fahim, I mean, why do you, uh, why are you saying this? I mean, why do you think, uh, you know, a woman workforce would be better than a man workforce or something like that? So what, are, what are your thoughts to that? Sure. So uh, just to, even before this COVID situation, uh, we've mm -hmm. had uh, people working from home. We've been very, very uh, pro uh, work from home culture. And most often, the work from home culture has been adopted more by women than uh, the male colleagues, right? Uh, because of maternity, because of kids, so on and so forth. And one of the things that we have seen uh, with the women folk is uh, they are able to easily dabble uh, work from home very, very effectively, right? Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, uh, not all men help with the uh, household chores or whatever it is that needs to be done. And unfortunately, a lot of it comes uh, comes down to women. And the fact that they have naturally uh, no, uh, multi-skilled and they can do multiple things at the same time, I think there's some bit of research also that uh, proves that. Um, I have felt that uh, women sometimes perform better when they're actually working from home, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've always had this culture. And I strongly believe that uh, it should not matter where they are working from, right? Mm -hmm. And what their situation is. Uh, mm -hmm. I do understand that this whole thing about getting back to work after maternity or a break or marriage or whatever it is. But I really think that uh, this whole COVID situation is going to uh, quickly uh, catapult women into the forefront because they're already good at work from home. Right. So I strongly believe that uh, women will stand to benefit a lot because of the current situation that uh, we are in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so fine. what you're saying is uh, because it is a situation where we are all working from home and uh, women sort of are, uh, are better off uh, working from home naturally. Uh, so there, there, there will be a situation that they will leverage, uh, you know, this and any way perform. Uh, better is that something even that better yeah. exactly so, they've already been performing really well for at least for us uh, so i have colleagues that i meet once in three months right mm -hmm. uh, although uh, she lives about three kilometers from our office so i don't think uh, we have any problems at all uh, with anybody and so i don't I don't mean to be biased about this because we don't have data in terms of are women more efficient working from home versus men are. But having said that, uh, it's just my personal experience that, you know, for us, it has been uh, fantastic. Okay, great. So great, fine. So in fact, you know, Fahim, ironically, I was just, uh, you know, sort of reading an article on multitasking and I just actually uh, did a podcast on that. And, you know, uh, because it is, uh, and you raised the topic of multitasking, what an irony, right? So that uh, the, right. the topic was actually on uh, the, the heading says women are not better as, at multitasking. They just do more work. And that's what the studies show. And it is just now that I finished that uh, podcast. And, you know, I'm talking to you and you've raised the topic. So let's, can we dwell and a little I have more to about add Absolutely. And I have to add to that with a little bit of advice mm -hmm. for my you know, uh, friends here, women friends. Um, yes. th there's a friend of mine, her name is Aruna. She's a CXO at, at a big company. And she and I, you know, a lot of times we discuss uh, these things about women in workforce, women in management, so on and so forth. And uh, she put it, uh, you know, uh, sadly so, very differently. Mm -hmm. She said, fine, women are so used to unpaid labor right? Mm -hmm. Throughout their years as homemakers, now it's a glorified term called homemakers, uh, mm -hmm. then uh, they, they are not so, uh, what do you say, forthcoming and uh, 
emphatic when it comes to salary raises or you know carry you no know, so usually when it comes to negotiating salaries and all of those things they are not so good at it so my word of uh, advice uh, to people is not to be like that because i think it's it's this whole mindset about uh, women are supposed to work that's not how it should be right i mean it should be men and women uh, who should be uh, doing it so yeah but i think uh, that, that's one of the things that women will need to work uh, on okay so we, which me what you're trying to say is when it comes to negotiations of uh, say pay or you know, whether it is consulting assignments or job or whatever it is yes. yeah absolutely so there is enough research to say that in a particular position a uh, same uh, the level of experience men earn more than women and there is there is exactly uh, there's plenty of data mm, absolutely yes. sure so i am just going back to you know the multitasking part of it and you know the article is right in front of me and some of the things that actually is coming out in this article is about uh, it's uh, multitasking is is actually no, is tough whether it is for a man or a woman and it's somehow sure. a myth, and it's considered a myth that you know women are better multitaskers so there is a sort of a uh, so that brings in a lot of low you know uh, for a woman to you know even perform because you know you you consider that you're a better better multitasker but it is not so uh, so what it says is uh, whether it is domestic duties or whether whatever it is in work or life situation it is better that you know you talk things out and sort of distribute work equally so that at the end of it there is in this load that the woman carries that yes uh, you know we are better multitasker so you end up doing lot more so what it actually says is it's a myth uh, that we were better multitaskers it's just that you end up doing lot more work so lot what more is it work. you have to yeah so there is lot of uh, in fact it, i mean if it's possible for you to go through the podcast that i just finished on this so what are the challenging misconceptions on this so anything that you have to say on this fahim because there's so the pfc that you're talking the brain that you're talking about it can't take more than one so effectively if you're doing one thing and you're actually giving attention to that fully whether it is man or woman uh, right is is the whole uh, science alert so to say right so uh, i'm not going to sit here uh, disputing the science and from what you tell me now clearly that that could have been a misconception even uh, for for me which means that's added burden on the women right that okay the the assumption is that you can do both these things and uh, do both of them effectively so you should be all right so yeah that's something i guess we should all be mindful of and there is no question uh, about the fact that uh, women do much more work there's no question about that i think that is uh, not uh, anything that anybody can uh, deny right so we'll have to i uh, know uh, figure out how is it that we can create supportive systems uh for women at work as well as work from home both you know uh, keeping all of these things right. in mind right so sure sure and in fact uh, fahim as you very rightly said uh, uh and i don't know you know why this article has come on and what it says is this flexible work option should be created both for men and women uh, together so that uh, you know men also have that time uh you know and the thought and the energy to support in whatever work that it, because it is assumed that only women require the flexible work uh, options but if if so there is a lot of thought that needs to go in the policy making of it being distributed uh, you know for both so that uh, you know men start thinking to help whether it is at home or at office you know uh, what do you sure. say about that yeah i i so i mean before covid i i think uh, this was a good question to tackle but during covid yeah. now it's like the default no it it, it yeah. has to happen but it's a it's a really really va- valid point if uh, if uh, spouses are going to be uh, working it can't just be that one spouse is working from home doing all these things right doing multiple right. things uh, working from home as well as taking care of the home and so i absolutely uh, buy that thing so uh, while i said that we are really happy doing that we we have quite a few of our male colleagues also on and off who work from home right mm-hmm. and uh, as part of this current thing the uh, the directions that i have shared with my team 
uh, recently in the last uh, few days is please come to the office only if you have a challenge working at home. It's like the other way around now, right? So earlier it would be, okay, if you have a pro problem, work from home. But now mm -hmm. it's, if you have a problem at home, you can come to the office. Okay, so sure. yeah. So sure. I definitely think we should encourage both men and women to be working from home. And yeah, absolutely. Sure. So I think uh, uh, one of your colleagues, I think the doctor whom you were mentioning has women's brains are connected different from men's brains. Men are good at highly focused jobs. Stepwise thinking, women are better at getting the big picture. Web thinking, this helps them handle uh, more, is what our doctor is saying. So probably that's a relevant point uh, you I, have to keep in mind. I don't know whether uh, you want to dispute that, uh, Pita, but I am not going to dispute Dr. Chari when she says that. Uh, okay. I, and, uh, and she's a renowned uh, neurosurgeon. Sorry, I forgot to okay. mention that she's not a surgeon, but she's a neurosurgeon. So she, I'm sure she definitely knows uh, plenty about the brain. So, uh, so see, uh, I don't know how much data is there, but somehow the urban myth or legend seems to be that, you know, women are good at right brain activity and men are good at left brain activity. But I don't know how much of that we can even generalize anymore, right? Mm -hmm. With uh, so much of, uh, you know, gender fluidity now and all of that, I don't know how much of generalization we can do and how much of these generalizations can actually impact uh, people who are, uh, there are plenty of women who are great at math and science and you know just about mm -hmm. everything. Likewise, there are plenty of uh, men who are right brain and creative or not good at uh, left brain activities at all. So, I, so while this might be true for a large section of people, but I think we should uh, get away from that uh, presumption anymore because of uh, no, the way we have been evolving and how the roles are getting uh, you know, fluid. I think the roles are getting much, much more interchanging and more, more fluid in nature. Absolutely. Sure, thank you. Yeah. Sure, fine. So the other question I had, and, and this is again, uh, I think in every interview I've brought this data point up and more also here because you're bringing this angle. Uh, so uh, if you look at the leadership level in the corporate world, you know, this is the McKinsey reports uh, research that says that there are only 0.2% uh, per of the population leadership level uh, who are women. And if you look at uh, women's uh, entrepreneurship journey, India is abysmally low. We are actually third from the bottom after Pakistan and Bangladesh. Uh, wow. when, uh, women don't take that step of entrepreneurship in the sense that, and even if they take the step for some, this is at a global level. And in, in India, uh, some uh, for some reason, uh, you know, in the South, people tend to take, uh, women tend to take that step as opposed to the North. Now, probably that's the literacy levels or whatever it may be that we can look at it for. But uh, these are, this is data that is there. And there are huge gra gaps in the sense that after a point of time, women disappear. In the sense, you'll see that till the managerial level, they are there. If you go to the corporate world, they're there. There are lots of uh, women who are there. And then once, you know, they, have, they take the break, uh, the moment you see the senior management level, it, it reduces. And then you don't, in the C-suit uh, jobs, you don't just have 0.2% who are women. And so, so where do you think is the real problem? Like, you know, um, looking at all of this, uh, where's the problem? I mean, we know uh, about more, the more than, I think more than where the problem is, uh, it, the question should be, who is the problem? And I think the answer is very clear. The men are the problem, right? So if what men are, are, yeah, absolutely, right? I mean, so if men are supportive of the women starting from home, right? Mm -hmm. uh, why wouldn't women be entrepreneurs? If men are supportive in the boardrooms and in the corner offices, why won't mm -hmm. more women be taking on those roles? So uh, I absolutely uh, have to say that it's really down to the men to start making those events to be uh, more, I wouldn't even call accommodative, I, to uh, absolutely get out of women's way. Let me put it like that. It's not about they men trying to accommodate women, right? They have to get out of the way and not make it difficult for women. I think that that's the way I would put it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I really think it's down to the men, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the reason why, unfortunately, women have to, uh, what do you say, 
uh, play hardball, right? They have to be a little bit more aggressive. Unfortunately, that that is that seems to be the case. Hmm. So, which means that, uh, and this is, if if you need to, if you have to be more aggressive, which is also you know generally considered as a quality more of a man like quality, right? If you have to be, so is it that we need to change like how a man is uh, to to be there in the leadership space? Uh, to be there at a, a women's, uh, you know, entrepreneurship journey, or to network, or whatever it means, maybe can we be our own self and do it, or do we have to change our roles according to and be more like a man, uh, you know, to be in the leadership space? What are your thoughts of that? Of that? I mean, I mean, the reason why uh, women should be in leadership roles is because they bring their own unique style to leadership. right mm. and that is what i think is missing both in the business world as well as the uh, uh, politics i mean how many of us all over the world have said hey i wish there were more women in politics right so i don't think women should change right it's just that maybe you know uh, elbow their way in that's that's mm-hmm. what i would put i don't think they should change their style of uh, you know functioning absolutely not mm-hmm. Sure, Fahim. So I mean, uh, it's a very bold uh, statement to make, actually, from your end, saying the problem is actually men, and we need to get out of their way in some sense uh, to uh, you know make them flourish. Uh, while there uh, is a lot actually, of yeah, I, it's, 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 you know you sort of acknowledgement of, uh, but I you know that's probably very humble of you to say that. But if you look at the leadership level and the kind of efforts leaders are making to reduce the gap. gap it's like 29% today it was 44% still there is a lot of gap in terms of promoting more women uh, you know at the leadership level to reduce the gap but the gap still exists so i uh, so there are a lot of suggestions that uh, you know other people have said that what should women do what else do you think see, see apart apart from uh, 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 the man getting away you know what else do you think a woman should do to make herself more visible uh and let us bring the angle of the digital world now let's move okay. a little bit to the women power in digital entrepreneurship because that's that's what is the main topic uh so what what are the things uh, what are the actions or one or two top two actions that a woman should take you know to make herself more visible in this journey right uh i think uh is to just step up and uh, claim the spotlight right uh, i think uh, for far too long women kind of i feel you know uh, i'm kind of generalizing a lot of women try to shy away from the spotlight right mm-hmm. it so you go into a conference it's mostly men right mm-hmm. at least when you go to digital marketing conferences you have a decent mix of uh, men versus women when i say decent i'm saying like 15% but that's not much mm-hmm. right when you look at our population size versus the participation so even in those spaces although it can be very crowded with men i really think uh, women should be a little bit more um, what do you say we, we should not shy away from, shy away from the spotlight and there are a lot of women right i think there are a lot of women who have taken that step uh, uh, shoulder to shoulder even if they have to elbow the uh, men a bit they have done really well when it comes to especially digital right a lot of women have gone on to do really really well especially in the agency side and the client side the brand management uh, in many many cmos uh, in the country so i definitely think uh, especially in the digital space and the digital marketing space uh, it's a very natural thing for uh, women to take on leadership roles uh, because i think it's a very nice mix of right brain and left brain activity and i i i somehow feel i'm really uh, more biased towards women doing better in digital field than uh, men and the one takeaway for women i would say would be to put yourself out there uh, don't like uh, preeta you're doing a fantastic job right i'm sure the first video that you did you must have been quite shy uh, putting yourself on the thing what are people going to think about ridicule now this thing of putting yourself on video is uh, mm-hmm. applies to you as well as for me right i think uh, everybody has that challenge i mean public speaking and putting yourself on the camera is a challenge for everybody having said that maybe a little bit more for uh, women and that is also because the internet is not a friendly place for women right that's it's a huge problem for women uh, thing so 
uh, I it's unfortunately I have to say women have to be a little thick skinned about the trolls, right? About the mm -hmm. unwanted attention, so on and so forth. But if you right. can, if women can go past that, I really think there's a huge, huge spoke, uh, scope in terms of establishing themselves uh, publicly, uh, more of a, as a personal brand, so on and so forth. Now, mm -hmm. uh, among the many people that we interacted with as part of uh, where we met at the boot camp, Prita, you, you are well, one of the few people who has amongst the women who has not hesitated to put yourself out there talking about uh, what you're most passionate about and all of that. And so let me ask you that question. How are you uh, feeling now after having done that? So has your work been more recognized? Have you been getting clients, inquiries? So t tell us about that. Hi, Asmita. Hi, Shanta. Yeah, hi, uh, my side. So yeah, so Fahim, uh, in fact, from the time that I've uh, started doing pre-framing, right, which is like, you know, doing one video, one podcast, you're setting up an article and things like that. The first thing that happened to me when I started doing that is I got a call from a mid-size software company asking me to coach their women employees. Uh, this is not uh, a huge company, but it's a well-known company. And um, in fact, this was before COVID. This was before COVID. And uh, we, uh, in fact, they made me do two, three sessions. Uh, it was quite an a process. And I got through and uh, we were about to start the coaching process when COVID happened. So the, the contract is still on. Uh, what they're trying to see is if we can do it online. So this is the first thing that happened to me. The second thing is, uh, of course, it's been a uh, challenging sort of uh, to get people into my webinar. I mean, I think I need to scale up a lot in my uh, technology uh, sort of effectiveness. Uh, and like for the past five to six months, I've just been setting up systems. And sometimes I get a doubt whether I'm doing uh, digital marketing or I'm doing coaching. I don't know. You know, there's so much of time that goes in this. Uh, that uh, you uh, sometimes forget what is your real job. So I'm. Uh, it's it's been it's been a very very challenging journey for me. I mean I've been out of my comfort zone almost every day. You know trying to set up these systems. Uh, but video. So it's going on for him. So I wouldn't say it's like uh, gone up, gone uh, to that uh, kind of level. But it started off and it's progressing uh, uh, slowly and steadily. And uh, that's what I would uh, like to say. I think we need to take those actions. It definitely helps because otherwise that mid-sized software company wouldn't have called me. <laughs> Absolutely. Of yes. Absolutely. And it's the same for men and women. So I just want to uh, give a shout out to Dr. Chari. She's got some great piece of advice. I will read it out. Yeah. Uh, so sure. what Dr. Chari says is what you need is self-esteem, love yourself, value yourself enough, and be a phenomenal woman in every sense. Thank you, Dr. Chari. That's really uh, you know, sweet of you to say that. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, and if doctors are saying this, I think we should just blindly follow it. Uh, Absolutely. That's the prescription. Sure. 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 Fahim. So I also have, uh, like you were talking about, um, you know, those unto-do uh, sort of uh, probably comments or, you know, I, I want to move into a sensitive angle in additional space, especially for women. Uh, in terms of cyber stalking and things like that that might happen. And uh, as, a, as a woman uh, entrepreneur, you know, one of the things that I was scared of to actually was even to be public in Facebook. You know, I was not live, I was not available in Facebook at all pro probably three, four years back. You know, it's, it's after this digital masters boot camp and everything I went, I started becoming active and I started, I made myself public, you know, just to share with you of my journey. And the moment you make yourself public, you know, and people start wondering why is it that they should send me so many videos, what happened and things like that. And you get so many requests and they're all men and sometimes there's this unto do kind of comments and things like that. So there is a way I have sort of learned to tackle with it. According to you, what would be some of the top two, three things that we should do to uh, maneuver this, uh, uh, say the other side of the thing right which is not so positive sure sure i mean so the unfortunate part is the unwanted attention right i mean there's so only so much that you can do i think the best thing that women can do is ignore people who want your attention i mm -hmm. uh, they say don't feed the trolls right 
you keep i mean you keep engaging them they'll come back with more 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 right so i think the best thing to do is ignore and continue doing your work unless of course if if it gets um, you know threats or abuses or anything in terms of physical harm a lot of times um, many of our challenges i'm not trying to uh, play down the challenges that uh, women have but a lot of times uh, we might be overplaying the challenges then all the benefits that we can get out of being there uh, and on video or you know being public mm. hi asta so, Yasa. so, so thinking... i just want to give a shout out asta is a 18 year old i think she is from um, the northeast she's just 18 years old and she does wow. a fantastic uh, job of digital marketing you should uh, look out for her nazina so okay nazin afzal hi nazin how are you Yes, so Nazim yeah. says yes. Ignore that's healthy, is what uh, he says. Yes, sure, uh, Nazim. We'll take your input on that. Yeah. So, so basically, what you're saying is uh, keep a positive frame, continue with whatever you're doing, and don't really give too much of attention to all those uh, negative energies that are coming up uh yeah so there are certain things that has come up in other interviews that i've been doing that you know one needs to know about the cyber laws and policies yeah sure nazim uh, okay nazim. hey so uh, everyone who's uh, listening in um ruchi hi ruchi nazim hi asta do you have a question for me um i mean related to the topic that we are discussing after i take on uh, preetha's question i'll be happy to uh, take on any of your questions so if you got a question please uh, type it in okay whatever you have let's uh, have some fun all right preetha your question yeah so doctor is saying block those people if possible and that's exactly what i do i mean i feel very happy blocking those people you can do that in the digital space you can't do that in the external world so <laughs> i just block them and you can sense you know quickly as to who's uh, trying to do whatever that they're trying to do so i agree with sure. you doctor on that yeah sure so um so i think like you know uh, i would like to start coming towards the end of the discussion there are, what else do you think is like uh, you know top 2 3 uh, points that you think a woman needs to take in terms of actions that she needs to do to say conquer uh, the digital space uh, whether uh, even outside or here like you know being an entrepreneur what do you think are any other views you have in this topic that you want to share please go ahead and do that uh, fine sir and then we will I don't know. You already asked me a question. If you want to ask me another question, you can, and then we we'll close it in a lighter note. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So that's. I think. Um, so I'm. I'm going to give you um, something that happened uh, uh, very recently, right? About uh, a week back, I was consulting for. Uh, I think somebody got onto a strategy session with me from uh, Madurai. and this uh, lady uh, she runs she's from chennai and she runs a studio in uh, madurai uh, a design studio and uh, she she's currently using an agency and they're doing a very cookie cutter style of uh, social media marketing putting up some pretty posts so on and so forth and uh, this design studio is in her name but there is nothing about her on the uh, page right nothing about her it's just her name and design studio and then when i was talking to her uh, so uh, luckily what happened was the husband and the wife together were on this strategy call right mm-hmm. and it was a perfect time for me to explain to her saying that hey you know what you should actually put yourself out there talk mm-hmm. about uh, your thing forget about the logo forget about the you uh, know uh, this whole corporate branding and social media marketing the traditional style what i want you to do is start taking videos right and put it out uh, there she's got an instagram page she's got she's quite popular actually but she has just been super shy about putting up videos so okay. long story short now she sends me a, a video on whatsapp asking sir what do you think is this good can i try this out so on and so forth so and she said it so beautifully after our strategy session she said sir i i really think my studio now has a second chance this is like life altering for me just this uh, one strategy se- uh, session 
and what the takeaway out of the multiple things that were take away for her the main take away for her was somebody giving her the assurance it is all right it doesn't matter who we are what we are as long as we are passionate about something we should show it to the world it is absolutely our um, goddamn business to tell people what our superpower is and what we are good at so that would be my number one uh, thing for women is i think when you do videos everything else becomes easy right if i tell you to do a video and tomorrow if i tell you to write a blog article blog article seems like nothing right you can always ask somebody to uh, write it for you and then you can edit it and put it up as a ghost writer so Today it's like me uh, on day one Uh, on day one in switzerland i did um, skydiving okay mm-hmm. and i was okay. absolutely terrified but the second day i did uh, para say a uh, paragliding and mm. that's like really nothing after you do a skydive but if i had okay. done the par- so my point is video is like that i mean that's the highest that you can do and beyond that mm. it is public speaking so i would say both these two things is about uh, putting uh, yourself out there because there's I don't think there's any other advice that I can uh, give women. I think you uh, know I would like to take advice from you and other women about how they do so many different things and work so much harder. I mean, you uh, know, it's it's kind of a shame that I don't help out as much as I do. So this, I think, uh, there's plenty that uh, men can learn from women. There's only one thing that uh, women can learn from men is to go show their superpower to the world. Oh, okay. so what you're saying is uh, just don't hesitate go out there and just do it and you can start off with uh, you know making videos and just as uh, what happened with your client and uh, uh, so in in fact there was one very interesting thing that uh, in some of the interviews and when i was interviewing avi arya arya also came that came up you know which was very uh, that's really sat in my mind that you know the middlemen actually has have gone now especially in the digital space uh, the very Absolutely. valid point that he had made was we don't have middlemen anymore so all you need to do is to actually go out there and market yourself and make a mark there and uh, it's 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 a question of time i guess uh, whether it is Absolutely. man or woman right uh, for you to uh, based on the work that you do the people start uh, you know appreciating uh, recognizing it sure so great for me i think okay. that's a very uh, you know it's it, you really made it easy to sort of have the discussion with you because you've accepted more of more uh, the points uh, graciously saying you know all we need to do is to get the men out of the way all we need to do is accept that yes it is like this uh, so you in some sense made it easy at the same time you also saying that you know we need to ask the women out there as to how do they manage so many things uh, i don't so and you asked a question i think we've been interacting to uh, but i would like to sort of uh, close this whole thing with uh, you know one message anyway that you've been giving uh, that message but any other uh, message that you want to give to all those women influencers like see one thing that happens for him is like you know when you take the step of women entrepreneurship right whether it is finance or uh, and especially with finance uh, they don't get the support you know the, the 100% support is not because they're mostly self financed okay and uh, of course there is lot of support that the government is giving today uh, but uh, right. uh, so you you put in all your money it's self finance and even if you go go ahead and take that step it's women are generally from disadvantaged communities is what i get to understand and this is again uh, the report uh, uh, you know data from mckinsey so there what do you think are your views one final thing uh, that you have to say from a finance uh, standpoint i i really think it's uh, up to the government i mean just like uh, the government takes care of um, you know marginalized uh, thing uh, but t- tell me if i'm wrong i thought the government had things uh, for women in, in terms of making it easier in terms of loans setting up things and all of those things now if that is not the case i really think it's definitely the government's uh, job also to include more and more uh, women especially in the face of so much data that is available out there that uh, women are challenged uh, being in the workspace and being entrepreneurs so i i would really think that should be the thing and i really think the i mean the other t- takeaway is uh, friends and family i think uh, always the biggest support are the friends and family and uh, most importantly the immediate family yeah, uh, 
the right. parents as well as the spouses if there is a spouse but uh, i think uh, that's that's a support that uh, women should expect and and should that's the support that must be. exactly absolutely mm. and so so i had a question for you prita so currently how are you helping entrepreneurs or women entrepreneurs how are you making their lives easier please tell me about that yes, part sir. of it so so fine so what i do my work is that is that i help uh, create goals for women and these are not like you know the usual performance appraisal goals that are there in organizations where you say okay this is the gap and this is what you need to improve upon or whatever but it is uh, you know sort of life changing goals where something that you really want to do in life these are inspiring goals you create for yourself and there is a process so it's like through visioning process uh, that these goals are created and i help them achieve those goals so whether it is a women entrepreneur or whether it is a uh, who it is as a woman since there are ups and downs in your career right and this is a reality so if you if, because of certain situations in the past if you have not been able to do it or if there is a situation where you want to improve it from here to the next level goal setting really matters so there is a uh, in fact a data point uh, in, uh, through harvard uh, study that says uh, that you know people who write goals uh, actually earn 10 times more as much as people who have their goals in their mind or don't even know what their goal is okay so this I, is a, this is people yeah these were people who graduated out of harvard and all those people who wrote goals down you know earn 10 times much more than people who had no goals so here i am helping people and i use brain based uh, methodology of coaching in in, the, in that Fantastic. process so so, so is it only for me. so is it only for women or is it also for men so in the corporates i do it for both men and women but my niche is women because this is very very close to my heart it's based on uh, you know the experiences i have gone through in life you know especially uh, after having been in the corporate world the break trying to get back all of that i feel i should support uh, you know women like me more and more and uh, so it's not that i don't uh, coach men i coach men too in the corporate world but uh, niche always helps right fahim you were the ones who told us that <laughs> so yes, the niche yes, absolutely i i you're going to be much more passionate because you know i can see your passion in this uh, session you uh, know how much you care about uh, women being in uh, you know entrepreneurship and in uh, you know uh, professional so absolutely more power to you uh, preeta and all the uh, listeners please reach out to uh, preeta she does amazing yeah, work i've chatted with her most of the time webinars <laughs> yeah the webinars actually will give you about the principles of brain and things like that and then you'll know what is ahead for you and uh, fahim Thank on you. a lighter lighter note let's uh, like what is that one thing that you will do for your women in your women ne women in your life <laughs> uh, so when you get back after this interview is over what is that one little thing that you think you should do for your wife if you have one <laughs> or i think it's for me and it's for uh, all the men is uh, don't come in their way right um i i don't want to keep it light but it's i think it's a, it's a very important thing uh, as a takeaway don't come in their way right so that's a solid point uh, fahim and uh, of course do housework deep, really deep okay <laughs> so and definitely yeah. do housework <laughs> so it looks sorry. simple it looks it sounds uh, simple there is a reason why um so i mean i know you wanted to end this on a lighter note but i will leave it on a little heavier reason why uh, laws in the us do reason why even though a lot of people think 50 50 is unreasonable the guy is uh, jeff bezos but he had to give away still 50% or whatever uh, money that was agreed upon so uh, and, and that's the kind of effort women put in not just at uh, home but also um, giving up their careers and supporting the care- careers of uh, men so three important things that they do taking care of the home 
taking care of uh, the you know, giving up their job and supporting the man so there is a reason why uh, there's two so the advice to men would be is to you know help out so that's it from okay. me uh, prita well, that, thank you so much for him with that message <laughs> Great, Dr. Uh, Chari. Thanks so much for accepting for this interaction, and yeah, I think there is Hardik Bhat. There's so many others joining. It's great, uh, nice to know uh, the doctor has been interacting constantly. And this uh, sense, I think it's gone a little bit beyond the time. But thank you so much. Uh, you made it really interactive, and you gave me the idea that ask questions to people who are. I did not do this in the other uh, interviews, and I'll take that as a tip. You know, when I do the rest of the interviews, sure. there are a lot more in store. Sure. Uh, you know. Thank you so Great. much, Fahim, and thanks again for joining. And uh, I don't know if I can say uh, have a great uh, fasting and Ramzan, and uh, pray for all of us. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Prita. Take care. Thanks uh, for bye joining. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. I am to do this interview, and as uh, Uh, Fahim in, uh, comes into uh, you know the panel uh, discussion. That good evening, Fahim. How are you doing? Fantastic, Rita. How are you? Good, good. So great to see you. And I was just you know explaining to the viewers as to why I was doing this, what is my objective, and also really uh, honored that you've accepted uh, this particular interview discussion. Uh, you know, I was very hesitant, uh, Fahim, to actually ask. uh you uh, whether uh, you know it's a right thing to do whether we can i can do this interview i've uh, you know kept my hesitation aside and did that so i guess that's one of the suggestions i would give to people when they want to do something go and you know keep the hesitation aside <laughs> what do you say for him for that you only get when you ask right yeah so sure so i think one common thread that i see in all the nine digital masters you know is that if you ask them for help uh, they don't hesitate to say no uh, they may take time just, you know because of what sorry sorry i just want to say hello to a bunch of people hi supriya how are you yes geetarsh kaur thank you for joining stick around yes please feel free to ask me any questions if you have uh, sure. i see a lot of uh, uh, men uh, definitely i i hope the men also have questions so why don't you shout out uh, preeta what is the topic going to be about hi happy yeah, rana yeah. how are you sure for him so as i've uh, actually uh, put it up in the post and i've been doing these interviews the topic is about women power in uh, digital entrepreneurship and i've been interviewing people from all walks of life and whether it's a digital expert like you or it's a doctor or it's a business entrepreneur or it's uh, you know the head of a company the kind of views that you get being in that leadership level and the experiences that you have in this particular topic is what i'm looking at because as women's independence coach you know one of the things all of us battle whether it is woman or man is like you know the various challenges that we face as an entrepreneur and more so as a women entrepreneur so i want to bring that angle here because i help women create goals and help them achieve it so i i think i've spoken a lot but just to clarify that i've been also uh, thanks priya uh, supriya right thanks happy runner coach so great there are some people i've seen who constantly attend these interviews and i hope th so the idea for him is basically that you know when they see these videos they they take away one action suggestion or uh, Um, you know, ideas that Doctor, people can do. Doctor Chari, nice to see you, Doctor Chari. Sorry, sorry, Doctor Chari no, is no, no, no. Uh, a Doctor Chari is a very renowned, uh, you know, a surgeon, and uh, yeah, she she is also part of the DMA, and we try to help her with digital marketing. Hi, Ramya. That, that's getting on nerves. Is uh, she doesn't get on anybody's nerves, but uh, Ramya <laughs> is uh, my colleague. Hey, Ramya, you should stick okay. around. This is about women entrepreneurs. And uh, sorry, Preeta, I'm going to keep doing this. So, but so we'll keep it uh, light and fun. Let's keep engaging people too. Good. Sure, Preeta. Yeah. So that was the idea that you had given. So, and I remember this, uh, uh, you know, uh, DMA that we had, and what it says here about Fahim is actually. uh you know test sell and scale profitability through paid media and uh, so with that and this is the inspiration for me to also engage with all the nine digital masters 
I've so far interviewed Avi Arya and uh, Sanjay Shanoi, and I hope to interview the rest. So let's see how it goes. Uh, so I want to quickly sure. introduce you. I'm sure all of them know you, but for the benefit of people who don't know you, can I take a minute introducing you, Fahim? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. So uh, Fahim is the CEO of uh, Fahim Ahmed. Uh, Mr. Fahim Ahmed is the CEO of BYT Digital, digital agency owner, and with greater than 20 years of experience. He uh, he's a person behind the strategy and execution of brands like Hamley's Toy Store. Harman Kardon, the future, uh, the Fortune 500 brand, Apparel brand basics. He is also, uh, you know, worked for Reliance brands and multiple brands of Times Internet, uh, like Zigbee's and Ghana. I hope I've told everything right for you. Who's clues? What is that? <laughs> okay. And sorry. apart from, sorry. Sorry, so, uh, I didn't uh, get what you said. Okay, so no, no, I think someone uh, put up something there. So I was just wondering if you did that or it is uh, someone. I, I, I was just, uh, I was just goofing around. <laughs> Don't worry okay, about that. So, <laughs> so great. So apart from many startups and local businesses, Fahim is actually passionate about playing golf. Uh, although he doesn't get uh, enough time for that, and he's a big advocate of low carb lifestyle living. So great, Fahim. Thank you again for accepting uh, this particular interview. And if you're comfortable, uh, can I start off with the first uh, question, Fahim? Yeah, yeah, please. Go ahead. I hope you're here and you're not elsewhere. Uh, so time for the first Talk. question. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sure, sure. So, uh, uh, Fahim, so apart from me actually, you know, getting in touch with you and getting to telling you that this is the topic, why do you think the topic is really important for you? The topic being women power in digital entrepreneurship. Uh, how, how do you think, where does it, uh, uh, you know, f fall in your uh, space of life or why do you think it's so important? Yeah, um, so, I mean, the long answer is that, uh, uh, not just in digital entrepreneurship, I think across uh, the cross section of uh, various businesses, I think women are already playing a very important role. And I think it's uh, even more so uh, going forward, uh, especially in digital entrepreneurship. I think uh, the kind of flexibility that people, uh, women can have in uh, digital entrepreneurship, I think uh, for a lot of people, this can be a nat natural choice. Right. Uh, why it is important for me is, I mean, I, as soon as you said we should do it, I, I right away said, yeah, sure, let's let's do that. Uh, simply because I don't think I can uh, do without women uh, colleagues in my workplace. Right. I can absolutely say that. And I have a very uh, good uh, CXO friend of mine. And I've always uh, said this. I hope no, none of my male colleagues are here. I've told them quite a few times if I could. I would just have an all-female team at uh, BYD itself, like a reverse discrimination, if you want to call it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm absolutely all for it. Mm. So is there a particular reason why, uh, Fahim, I mean, why do you, uh, why are you saying this? I mean, why do you think, uh, you know, a woman workforce would be better than a man workforce or something like that? So what, are, what are your thoughts to that? Sure. So uh, just to, even before this COVID situation, uh, we've mm. had uh, people working from home. We've been very, very uh, pro uh, work from home culture. Mm. And mm. most often the work from home culture has been adopted more by women than uh, the male colleagues, right? Uh, because of maternity, because of kids, so on and so forth. And one of the things that we have seen uh, with the women folk is uh, they are able to easily dabble uh, work from home very, very effectively. Mm. Right mm -hmm. now, unfortunately, uh, not all men help with the uh, household chores or whatever it is that needs to be done. And unfortunately, a lot of it comes uh, comes down to women. And the fact that they have naturally, uh, know, uh, multi-skilled and they can do multiple things at the same time. I think there's some bit of research also that uh, proves that. Um, I have felt that uh, women sometimes perform better when they're actually working from home. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've always had this culture and I strongly believe that uh, it should not matter where they are working from. Right. Mm -hmm. And what their situation is. Uh, mm -hmm. I do understand that this whole thing about getting back to work after maternity or a break or marriage or whatever it is, 
but i really think that uh, this whole covid situation is going to uh, quickly uh, catapult women into the forefront because they are already good at work from home right so i strongly believe that uh, women will stand to benefit a lot because of the current situation that uh, we are in mm-hmm. so uh, so fine what you're saying is Uh, because it is a situation where we are all working from home and uh, women sort of are uh, are better off uh, working from home naturally uh, so there 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 will be a situation that they will leverage uh, you know this and any way perform uh, better is that something is that better. what you yeah exactly so, they've already been performing really well for at least for us uh, so i have colleagues that i meet once in 3 months right mm-hmm. uh, although uh she lives about 3 kilometers from our office so i don't think uh, we have any problems at all uh with anybody and so i don't i don't mean to be uh, biased about this because i we don't have data in terms of are women more efficient working from home versus right. men are but right. having said that uh it's just my personal experience that you know for us it has been uh, fantastic Okay, great. So great, fine. So in fact, you know, Fahim. Uh, ironically, I was just, uh, you know, sort of reading an article on multitasking, and I just actually uh, did a podcast on that. And you know, uh, because it is, uh, and you raised the topic of multitasking. What an irony, right? So that the the, right. the topic was actually on uh, the the heading says women are not better as at multitasking. They just do more work. and that's what the studies show and it is just now that i finished that uh, podcast and you know i'm talking to you and you've raised the topic so let's can we dwell and i have to add about- absolutely and i have to add to that with a little bit of advice mm-hmm. for my you know uh, friends here women friends um, yes. there's a friend of mine her name is aruna she's a cxo at in a big company and she and i you know a lot of times we discuss uh, these things about women in workforce women in management so on and so forth and uh, she put it uh, you know uh, sadly so very differently mm-hmm. she said fine women are so used to unpaid labor right mm-hmm. throughout their years as homemakers now it's a glorified term called homemakers uh, mm-hmm. then uh, they they are not so uh, what do you say forthcoming and uh, emphatic when it comes to salary raises or you know carry you no know, so usually when it comes to negotiating salaries and all of those things they are not so good at it so my word of uh, advice uh, to people is not to be like that because i think it's it's this whole mindset about uh, women are supposed to work that's not how it should be right i mean it should be men and women uh, who should be uh, doing it so yeah but i think uh, that, that's one of the things that women will need to work uh, on okay so we, which me what you're trying to say is when it comes to negotiations of uh, say pay Salary, or you know, whether it is consulting assignments or average. job or whatever it is yes. yeah absolutely because there is enough research to say that in a particular position uh, same uh, the level of experience men earn more than women and there is there is exactly there's plenty of data mm, absolutely yes. sure so i am just going back to you know the multitasking part of it and you know the article is right in front of me and some of the things that actually is coming out in this article is about uh, it's uh, multitasking is is actually no, is tough whether it is for a man or a woman and it's somehow sure. a myth, and it's considered a myth that you know women are better multitasker so there is a sort of a uh, so that brings in a lot of low you know uh, for a woman to you know even perform because you know you you consider that you're a very better, better multitasker but it is not so uh, so what it says is uh, whether it is domestic duties or whether whatever it is in work or life situation it is better that you know you talk things out and sort of distribute work equally so that at the end of it there is in this load that the woman carries that yes uh, you know we are better multitasker so you end up doing lot more so what it actually says is it's a myth uh, that you were better multitasker it's just that you end up doing lot more work so lot what more is it work. you have to yeah so there is lot of uh, in fact it, i mean if it's possible for you to uh, go through the podcast that i just finished on this so what are the challenging misconceptions on this so anything that you have to say on this fahim because there's 
so the pfc that you talk the brain that you're talking about it can't take more than one so effectively if you're doing one thing you are actually giving attention to that fully whether it is man or woman uh, right is is the whole uh, science alert so to say right so uh, i'm not going to sit here uh, disputing the science and from what you tell me now clearly that that could have been a misconception even uh, for for me which means that's added burden on the women right that okay, okay the the assumption is that you can do both these things and uh, do both of them effectively so you should be all right so yeah that's something i guess we should all be mindful of and there is no question uh, about the fact that uh, women do much more work there's no question about that i think that is uh, not uh, anything that anybody can uh, deny right so we'll have to you uh, know uh, figure out how is it that we can create supportive systems uh for women at work as well as work from home both you know uh, keeping all these things right. in mind right so sure sure and in fact uh, fahim as you very rightly said uh, uh and i don't know you know why this article has come on and what it says is this flexible work option should be created both for men and women uh, together so that uh, you know men also have that time uh you know and the thought and the energy to support in whatever work that it, because it is assumed that only women require the flexible work uh, options but if if so there is a lot of thought that needs to go in the policy making of it being distributed uh, you know for both so that uh, you know men start thinking to help whether it is at home or at office you know uh, what do you say yeah. about that yeah i i so i mean before covid i i think uh, this was a good question to tackle but during covid yeah. now it's like the default you no know? it it, it right. has to happen but it's a it's a really really va- valid point if uh, if uh, spouses are going to be uh, working it can't just be that one spouse is working from home doing all these things right doing multiple right. things uh, working from home as well as taking care of the home and so i absolutely uh, by the, so uh, while i said that we are really happy doing that we we have quite a few of our male colleagues also on and off who work from home right mm-hmm. and uh, as part of this current thing the uh, the directions that i have shared with my team uh, recently in the last uh, few days is please come to the office only if you have a challenge working at home it's like the other way around now mm-hmm. right so earlier it would be okay if you have a pro- problem work from home but now mm-hmm. if you have a problem at home you can come to the office okay, so sure. yeah so sure. i definitely think we should encourage both men and women to be working from home and yeah absolutely sure so i think uh, uh, one of your colleagues i think the doctor whom you were mentioning has women's brains are connected different from men's brains men are good at highly focused jobs step by thinking women are better at getting the big picture web thinking this helps them handle uh, more is what a doctor is saying so probably that's a relevant point uh, you I, have to keep in mind i don't know whether uh, you want to dispute that uh, peter but i am not going to dispute dr chari when she says that uh, okay. I, and uh, and she's a renowned uh, neurosurgeon sorry i forgot to okay. mention that she's not a surgeon but she's a neurosurgeon so she i'm sure she definitely knows uh, plenty about the brain so uh, so see uh, i don't know how much data is there but somehow the urban myth or legend seems to be that you know women are good at right brain activity and men are good at left brain activity but i don't know how much of that we can even generalize anymore right mm-hmm. with uh, so much of uh, you know gender fluidity now and all of that i don't know how much of generalization we can do and how much of these generalizations can actually impact uh, people who are uh, there are plenty of women who are great at math and science and you know just about mm-hmm. everything likewise there are plenty of uh, men who are right brain and creative or not good at uh, left brain activities at all so i so while this might be true for a large section of people but i think we should uh, get away from that uh, presumption anymore because of uh, no the way we have been evolving and how the roles are getting 
uh, you know, fluid. I think the roles are getting much, much more interchanging and more, more fluid in nature. Absolutely. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Sure, fine. So the other question I had, and and this is again, uh, I think in every interview I've brought this data point up, and more also here because you're bringing this angle. Uh, so uh, if you look at the leadership level in the corporate world, you know this is the McKinsey reports uh, research that says that there are only 0.2 uh, percent of the population in the leadership level uh, who are women, and if you look at uh, women's uh, entrepreneurship journey. India is abysmally low. We are actually third from the bottom after Pakistan and Bangladesh, uh, wherein wow. uh, women don't take that step of entrepreneurship in the sense that, and even if they take the step for some, this is at a global level. And in, in India, uh, some uh, for some reason, uh, you know, in the south, people tend to take uh, women tend to take that step as opposed to the north. Now, probably that's the literacy levels or whatever it may be that we can look at it for. But uh, these are, this is data that is there, and there are huge gra- gaps in the sense that after a point of time, women disappear. In the sense, you'll see that till the managerial level, they are there. If you go to the corporate world, they're there. There are lots of uh, women who are there, and then once you know they have, they take the break. Uh, the moment you see the senior management level, it it reduces, and then you don't in the C-suite uh, jobs, you don't just have 0.2 percent who are women. So, so where do you think is the real problem? Like, you know, um, looking at all of this, uh, where's the problem? I mean, we know uh, what more, the more than, I think more than where the problem is, uh, it, the question should be, who is the problem? And I think the answer is very clear. The men are the problem, right? So if what men are, are, yeah, absolutely, right? I mean, so if men are supportive of the women starting from home, right? Uh, why wouldn't women be entrepreneurs? If men are supportive in the boardrooms and in the corner offices, why won't mm. m- more women be taking on those roles? So uh, I absolutely uh, have to say that it's really down to the men to start making those events to be uh, more, I wouldn't even call accommodating, I, to uh, absolutely get out of women's way. Let me put it like that. It's not about they men trying to accommodate women, right? They have to get out of the way and not make it difficult for women. I think that that's the way I would put it. So, mm. yeah. Uh, so I really think it's down to the men, right? Mm. And uh, I think that's the reason why, unfortunately, women have to, uh, what, what do you say, uh, play hardball, right? They have to be a little bit more aggressive. Unfortunately, that, that, is, that seems to be the case. Hmm. So, which means that, uh, and this is, if if you need to, if you have to be more aggressive, which is also, you know, generally considered as a quality, more of a man-like quality, right? If you have to be, uh, so is it that we need to change like how a man is uh, to to be there in the leadership space, uh, to be there at a, a women's, uh, you know, entrepreneurship journey or to network or whatever it means, maybe. Can we be our own self and do it? Or do we have to change our roles according to, and be more like a man, uh, you know, to be in the leadership space? What are your thoughts of that? Of that? I mean, I mean, the reason why uh, women should be in leadership roles is because they bring their own unique style to leadership, right? Mm. And that is what I think is missing both in the business world as well as the uh, uh, politics. I mean, how many of us all over the world have said, hey, I wish there were more women in politics? Right. So I don't think women should change. Right. It's just that maybe, you know, uh, elbow their way in. That's that's mm-hmm. what I would put. I don't think they should change their style of uh, you know, functioning. Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Sure, Fahim. So, I mean, uh, it's a very bold uh, statement to make, actually, from your end, saying the problem is actually men and we need to get out of their way in some sense uh, to, uh, you know, make them flourish. Uh, while there uh, is a lot of, yeah, I, it's, 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 it is, you know, you sort of acknowledgement of, uh, but I, you know, that's probably very humble of you to say that. But if you look at the leadership level and the kind of efforts leaders are making to reduce the gap, gap, it's like 29% today, it was 44%. Still, there is a lot of gap in terms of promoting more women, uh, you know, at the leadership level to reduce the gap, but the gap still exists. So, I uh, so there are a lot of suggestions that uh, you know other people have said that what should women do? What else do you think? See, see apart apart from 
uh, uh, the man getting away you know what else do you think a woman should do to make herself more visible uh, and let us bring the angle of the digital world now let's move okay. a little bit to the women power in digital entrepreneurship because that's that's what is the main topic uh, so what what are the things uh, what are the actions or one or two top two actions that a woman should take you know to make herself more visible in this journey right uh, i think uh, is to just step up and uh, claim the spotlight right uh, i think uh, for far too long women kind of i feel you know i'm kind of generalizing a lot of women try to shy away from the spotlight right mm -hmm. it so you go into a conference it's mostly men right mm -hmm. at least when you go to digital marketing conferences you have a decent mix of uh, men versus women when i say decent i'm saying like 15% but that's not much mm -hmm. right when you look at our population size versus the participation so even in those spaces although it can be very crowded with men i really think uh, women should be a little bit more um what do you say we, we should not shy away shy away from the spotlight and there are a lot of women right i think there are a lot of women who have taken that step uh, uh, shoulder to shoulder even if they have to elbow the uh, men a bit they have done really well when it comes to especially digital right a lot of women have gone on to do really really well especially in the agency side and the client side the brand management uh, in many many cmos uh in the country so i definitely think uh, especially in the digital space and the digital marketing space uh, it's a very natural thing for uh, women to take on leadership roles uh mm. because i think it's a very nice mix of right brain and left brain activity and i i i somehow feel i'm really uh, more biased towards women doing better in digital field than uh, men and the one takeaway for women i would say would be to put yourself out there uh don't like aprita uh, you're doing a fantastic job right i'm sure the first video that you did you must have been quite shy uh putting yourself on the thing what are people going to think about ridicule now this thing of putting yourself on video is uh applies to you as well as for me right i think uh, everybody has that challenge i mean public speaking and putting yourself on the camera is a challenge for everybody having said that maybe a little bit more for uh women and that is also because the internet is not a friendly place for women right that's it's a mm -hmm. huge exactly. problem for women uh thing mm -hmm. so uh i it's unfortunately i have to say women have to be a little thick skinned about the trolls right about the mm -hmm. unwanted attention so on and so forth but if you right. can if women can go past that i really think there's a huge huge scope uh, scope in terms of establishing themselves a uh, publicly uh, more of a, as a personal brand so on and so forth now mm -hmm. uh, among the many people that we interacted with as part of uh, where we met at the boot camp prita you, you yeah. are well, one of the few people who has amongst the women who has not hesitated to put yourself out there talking about uh, what you are most passionate about and all of that and so let me ask you that question how are you uh, feeling now after having done that so has your work been more recognized have you been getting clients enquiries so t tell us about that hi asmita hi shanta yeah hi uh, my side so yeah so fahim uh, in fact from the time that i have uh, started doing pre framing right which is like you know doing one video one podcast setting up an article and things like that the first thing that happened to me when i started doing that is i got a call from a mid size software company asking me to coach their women employees uh, this is not a, a huge company but it's a well known company and um, in fact this was before covid this was before covid and uh, we uh, in fact they made me do two three sessions uh, it was quite an a process and i got through and uh, we were about to start the coaching process when covid happened so the the contract is still on uh, what they are trying to see is if we can do it online so this is the first thing that happened to me the second thing is uh, of course it's been a uh, challenging sort of uh, to get people into my webinar i mean i think i need to scale up a lot in my uh, technology uh, sort of effectiveness uh, and like for the past 5 to 6 months i've just been setting up systems 
and sometimes i get a doubt whether i'm doing uh, digital marketing or i'm doing coaching i don't know you know this so much of time that goes in this uh, that uh, you uh, sometimes forget what is your real job so i'm uh, it's it's been it's been a very very challenging journey for me i mean i've been out of my comfort zone almost every day you know trying to set up these systems uh, but video so it's going on for him so i wouldn't say it's like uh, gone up, gone uh, to that uh, kind of level but it started off and it's progressing uh, uh, slowly and steadily and uh, that's what i would uh, like to say i think we need to take those actions it definitely helps because otherwise that mid size software company wouldn't have called me <laughs> absolutely because... absolutely and it's the same for men and women so i just want to uh, give a shout out to dr chari she's got some great piece of advice i will read it out yeah. uh, so sure. what dr chari says is what you need is self esteem love yourself value yourself enough and be a phenomenal woman in every sense thank you dr chari that's really uh you know sweet of you to say that excellent yeah i mean and if doctors are saying this i think we should just blindly follow it uh, absolutely that's a prescription sure 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 fine so i also have uh, like you were talking about um you know those unto do uh, sort of uh, probably comments or you know i i want to move into a sensitive angle in additional space especially for women uh in terms of cyber stalking and things like that that might happen and uh, as a, as a woman uh, entrepreneur you know one of the things that i was scared of to actually was even to be public in facebook you know i was not li- i was not available in facebook at all pr- probably 3 4 years back you know it's it's after this digital masters boot camp and everything i went i started becoming active and i started i made myself public you know just to share with you of my journey and the moment you make yourself public you know and people start wondering why is it that they should send me so many videos what happened and things like that and you get so many requests and they're all men and sometimes there's this unto do kind of comments and things like that so there is a way i have sort of learned to tackle with it according to you what would be some of the top two three things that we should do to uh, maneuver this uh, uh, say the other side of the a thing right which is not so positive sure sure i mean so the unfortunate part is the unwanted attention right i mean there is so only so much that you can do i think the best thing that women can do is ignore people who want your attention i mm-hmm. uh, they say don't feed the trolls right you mm-hmm. keep fe- i mean you keep engaging them they'll come back with more 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 right so i think the best thing to do is ignore and continue doing your work unless of course if if it gets um you know threats or abuses or anything in terms of physical harm a lot of times um, many of our challenges i'm not trying to uh, play down the challenges that uh, women have but a lot of times uh, we might be overplaying the challenges then all the benefits that we can get out of being there uh, and on video or you know being public mm. hi yeah. asa so, so i just want to give a shout out asta is a 18 year old i think she's from um, the northeast she's just 18 years old and she does wow. a fantastic uh, job of digital marketing you should uh, look out for her nazina so okay nazin afzal hi nazin how are you yeah so nazin yeah. says yes ignore that healthy is what uh, he says yes sure uh, nazin will take your input on that yeah so so basically what you're saying is uh, keep a positive frame continue with whatever you're doing and don't really give too much of attention to all those uh, negative energies that are coming up in the internet this is uh, anyway i will happen whether you are in the digital space or outside uh, yeah so there are certain things that has come up in other interviews that i've been doing that you know one needs to know about the cyber laws and policies yeah sure nazim uh, okay nazim hey so uh everyone who's uh, listening in um ruchi hi ruchi nazin hi asta do you have a question for me um i mean related to the topic that we are discussing after i take on uh, preeta's question i'll be happy to uh, take on any of your questions so if you got a question please uh, type it in okay whatever you have let's uh, have some fun all right preeta your question 
Yeah, so doctor is saying block those people if possible and that's exactly what I do. I mean, I feel very happy blocking those people. You can do that in the digital space. You can't do that in the external world. So <laughs> I just block them and you can sense, you know, quickly as to who's uh, trying to do whatever that they're trying to do. So I agree with sure. you, doctor, on that. Yeah, sure. So, um, so I think like, you know, uh, I would like to towards, coming towards the end of the discussion there. What else do you think is like, uh, you know, top two, three uh, points that you think a woman needs to take in terms of actions that she needs to do to, say, conquer uh, the digital space, uh, whether uh, even outside or here, like, you know, being an entrepreneur. What do you think? Are any other views you have in this topic that you want to share? Please go ahead and do that, uh, fine, sir. And then we will... I don't know if you already asked me a question. If you want to ask me another question, you can. And then we'll close it in a lighter note. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, that's I, the um, so I, I'm, I'm going to give you um, something that happened uh, uh, very recently, right? About uh, a week back, I was consulting for, um, I think somebody got onto a strategy session with me from uh, Madurai. And this uh, lady, uh, she runs, she's from Chennai and she runs a studio in uh, Madurai, uh, a design studio. And uh, she she's currently using an agency and they're doing a very cookie cutter style of uh, social media marketing, putting up some pretty posts, so on and so forth. And uh, this design studio is in her name, but there is nothing about her on the uh, page, right? Nothing about her. It's just her name and design studio. And then when I was talking to her, uh, so uh, luckily what happened was the husband and the wife together were on this strategy call, right? Mm -hmm. And it was a perfect time for me to explain to her saying that, hey, you know what? You should actually put yourself out there. Talk mm -hmm. about uh, your thing. Forget about the logo. Forget about the, you uh, know, uh, this whole corporate branding and social media marketing, the traditional style. What I want you to do is start taking videos, right? And put it out uh, there. She's got an Instagram page. She's got, she's quite popular actually, but she has just been super shy about putting up videos. So okay. long story short, now she sends me a, a video on WhatsApp asking, sir, what do you think? Is this good? Can I try this out? So on and so forth. So, and she said it so beautifully after our strategy session. She said, sir, I, I really think my studio now has a second chance. This is like life altering for me just this uh, one strategy se uh, session. And what the takeaway out of the multiple things that were takeaway for her, the main takeaway for her was somebody giving her the assurance, it is all right, it doesn't matter who we are, what we are, as long as we are passionate about something, we should show it to the world. It is absolutely our um, goddamn business to tell people what our superpower is and what we are good at. So that would be my number one uh, thing for women is, I think when you do videos, everything else becomes easy, right? If I tell you to do a video and tomorrow if I tell you to write a blog article, blog article seems like nothing, right? You can always ask somebody to uh, write it for you and then you can edit it and put it up as a ghost, right? So Today it's like me uh, on day one, uh, on day one in Switzerland, I did um, skydiving, okay? Mm -hmm. And I was okay. absolutely terrified. But the second day, I did uh, para say, uh, paragliding. And mm -hmm. that's like really nothing after you do a skydive. But if I had okay. done the par, So my point is, video is like that. I mean, that's the highest that you can do. And beyond that, mm -hmm. it is public speaking. So I would say both these two things is about uh, putting uh, yourself out there because there's I don't think there's any other advice that I can uh, give women. I think uh, no, I would like to take advice from you and other women about how they do so many different things and work so much harder. I mean, uh, no, it's it's kind of a shame that I don't help out as much as I do. So this, I think uh, there's plenty that uh, men can learn from women. There's only one thing that uh, women can learn from men is to go show their superpower to the world. Oh, okay. So what you're saying is uh, just don't hesitate, go out there and just do it. And you can start off with, uh, you know, making videos and just as uh, what happened with your client and uh, 
so in, in fact, there was one very interesting thing that uh, in some of the interviews and when I was interviewing Avi, Arya, Arya also, Fahim, that came up, you know, which was very, uh, that's really sad in my mind that, you know, the middlemen actually has, have gone now, especially in the digital space. Uh, the very Absolutely. valid point that he had made was, we don't have middlemen anymore. So all you need to do is to actually go out there and market yourself and make a mark there. And uh, it's, it's, it's a question of time, I guess, uh, whether it is Absolutely. man or woman. Right uh, for you to, uh, based on the work that you do, the people start, uh, you know, appreciating, uh, recognizing it. Sure. So great, for me. I think okay. that's a very, uh, you know, it's uh, it, you really made it easy to sort of have the discussion with you because you've accepted more of more uh, the points uh, graciously, saying, you know, all we need to do is to get the men out of the way. All we need to do is accept that yes, it is like this. Uh, so you, in some sense, made it easy. At the same time, you're also saying that, you know, we need to ask the women out there as to how do they manage so many things. Uh, I don't, so, and you've asked a question, I think we've been interacting too. Uh, but I would like to sort of uh, close this whole thing with, uh, you know, one message. Anyway, that you've been giving uh, that message, but any other uh, message that you want to give to all those women influencers. Like, see, one thing that happens, Fahim, is like, you know, when you take the step of women entrepreneurship, right, whether it is finance or, uh, and especially with finance, uh, they don't get the support, you know, the 100% the support because they're mostly self-financed. Okay, and uh, of course, there's a lot of support that the government is giving today. Uh, but, uh, right. uh, so you, you put in all your money, it's self-financed, and even if you go go ahead and take that step. It's women are generally from disadvantaged communities is what I get to understand. And this is again, uh, the report, uh, uh, you know, data from McKinsey. So there, what do you think are your views? One final thing uh, that you have to say from a finance uh, standpoint. I, I, I really think it's uh, up to the government. I mean, just like uh, the government takes care of, um, you know, marginalized uh, thing, uh, but, T tell me if I'm wrong. I thought the government had things uh, for women in, in terms of making it easier, in terms of loans, setting up things and all of those things. Now, if that is not the case, I really think it's definitely the government's uh, job also to include more and more uh, women, especially in the face of so much data that is available out there that uh, women are challenged uh, being in the workspace and being entrepreneurs. So I, I would really think that should be the thing. And I really think the, I mean, the other takeaway is uh, friends and family. I think uh, always the biggest support are the friends and family and uh, most importantly, the immediate family, yeah, uh, the right. parents as well as the spouses, if there's a spouse. But uh, I think uh, that's that's a support that uh, women should expect. And, and that's the support that must, exactly. Absolutely. And so, so I had a question for you, Preeta. So currently, how are you helping entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs? How are you making their lives easier? Please tell me about that yes, part sir. of it. Sure. So, so Fahim, so what I do, my work is that, is that I help uh, create goals for women. And these are not like, you know, the usual performance appraisal goals that are there in organizations where you say, okay, this is the gap and this is what you need to improve upon or whatever. But it is, uh, you know, sort of life-changing goals where something that you really want to do in life, these are inspiring goals you create for yourself. And there is a process to it, like through visioning process uh, that these goals are created and I help them achieve those goals. So whether it is a women entrepreneur or whether it is, uh, whoever it is, as a woman, since there are ups and downs in your career, right? And this is a reality. So if you, if, because of certain situations in the past, if you've not been able to do it, or if there is a situation where you want to improve it from here to the next level, goal setting really matters. So there is, a, uh, in fact, a data point uh, uh, through Harvard uh, study that says uh, that, you know, people who write goals uh, actually earn 10 times more as much as people who have their goals in their mind or don't even know what their goal is. Okay, so this, I, is, a, this is people, yeah, these were people who graduated out of Harvard and all those people who wrote goals down you know, earn 10 times much more than people who had no goals. So here I am helping people and I use brain this uh, methodology of coaching in, in the entire Fantastic. process. So, so, so is it only for, me. so is it only for women or is it also for men? 
so in the corporates i do it for both men and women but my niche is women because this is very very close to my heart it's based on uh, you know the experiences i have gone through in life you know especially uh, after having been in the corporate world the break trying to get back all of that i feel i should support uh, you know women like me more more and uh, so it's not that i don't coach men i coach men too in the corporate world but uh, niche always helps right fahim you are the ones who told us that <laughs> so yes, the niche yes, absolutely really and and you're going to be much more passionate because you know i can see your passion in this uh, session you uh, know how much you care about uh, women being in uh, you know entrepreneurship and in uh, you know uh, profession so absolutely more power to you uh, preeta and all the uh, listeners please reach out to uh, preeta she does amazing yeah, work i've chatted with her most of the time webinars huh? yeah the webinars actually will give you about the principles of brain and things like that and then you will know what is ahead for you and uh, fahim on a lighter, a lighter note let's uh, like what is that one thing that you will do for your women in your women ne women in your life <laughs> uh, so when you get back after this interview is over what is that one little thing that you think you should do for your wife if you have one <laughs> or I, i think it's for me and it's for uh, all the men is uh, don't come in their way right um i i don't want to keep it light but it's i think it's a, it's a very important thing uh, as a takeaway don't come in their way right so that's a solid point uh, fahim and uh, of course do housework deep, really deep okay <laughs> so i actually do housework <laughs> so it looks sorry. simple it looks it sounds uh, simple there is a reason why um so i mean i know you wanted to end this on a lighter note but i will leave it on a little heavier the reason why uh, laws in the us do reason why even though a lot of people think 50 50 is unreasonable the guys uh, jeff bezos but he had to give away still 50% or whatever uh, money that was agreed upon so uh, and, and that's a kind of effort women put not just at uh, home but also um, giving up their careers and supporting the care- careers of uh, men so three important things that they do taking care of the home taking care of uh, the you know, giving up their job and supporting the man so there is a reason why uh, there's this so the advice to men would be is to you know help out so that's it from me uh, peter yeah, thank you so much for being with that great dr chari thanks so much for accepting the interaction and yeah Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.